Hi all, welcome to Grape City Documents webinar. We are pleased to announce the new V5 release and today I will be presenting the new features we have added in this release. My name is Shilpa Sharma. I am product manager for Grape City Documents. If you have any questions on the new features, please email me on this address. Before I move on to the agenda of the webinar, let me give you an overview of what Grape City Documents is about. So productivity, efficiency, and security, these are key aspects of document management. And this is the reason why organizations are shifting from paper documents to digital documents. So with trillions of electronic data that is floating over the web, the documents are being generated from data, reports, analysis, and collaborations, user inputs for uh, storage, or retrieval of data, or sharing data across at runtime every day. So Grape City Documents is a set of document APIs that helps create, load, edit, save, convert XLSX spreadsheets, PDF, images, and docx files using csharp.net, vb.net, or Java. There is no dependency on Acrobat or MS Office Suite products. These APIs are fully supported on .NET 6. And also included in Grape City Documents is Grape City Documents PDF Viewer. It's a JavaScript based PDF documents viewer and editor. It helps uh, to view, edit, design, fill, submit or print PDF forms or PDF documents uh, over the web and also save modified PDFs on the client. So the snapshot you see over here is Grape City Documents PDF viewer with a PDF that has been generated with uh, Grape City Documents for PDF or GCPDF API. Uh, multiple users are seen here collaborating over the PDF documents and they are using comment and reply tool to comment over the documents. Also included are other products. You can have a look on www.gripsy.com slash documents dash API. So let me go through the agenda of the webinar. We have added uh, SVG support in GCPDF and GC imaging products. Uh, using which you will now be able to create, draw and modify SVG content on uh, PDF document and images. In GCPDF, we have added a sample uh, which will help you print PDF document uh, directly to a printer. Uh, also, we have added uh, an enum type uh, to linearize your existing PDF document. In GCPDF viewer, we have added uh, some enhancements to the UI for quick editing of PDF documents. And uh, we have also added a panel uh, which will help to show PDF tags. So if you have a tagged PDF file, you will now be able to view it in uh, GCPDF viewer with the tags being shown in the panel. And uh, you will be able to navigate through those tags to different sections of the document. In GC Excel, um, uh, I will cover how to import a sheet or range data from Excel file. But the catch here is that you don't load the whole Excel file into the object model, but you just import the data. So it is a new faster way of importing data from Excel files. Uh, you will also now be able to print Excel files directly to printer. And we have also introduced a new formula to interface. Uh, it will help you apply dynamic array formulas in your Excel file. And in GC Word, we now support array and list as data source types and the individual elements of the, these data sources would be accessible now using a new value template tag. Uh, so let's go through the details now. Let me start with the new SVG support we have added in GC PDF and GC Imaging products. So SVG is an important format for web developers because images in this format when drawn on the web uh, can be rendered in any size without loss of quality. And uh, because of many advantages of SVG format, it becomes essential uh, to support this format when we are drawing content on PDF documents or saving images into various image formats. So uh, we have introduced the new GC SVG document class that can create, load, inspect, and modify the internal structure of SVG image. Uh, you can also obtain an SVG image from a file, uh, a stream or a byte array and draw that SVG image uh, to a GC PDF document object, GC bitmap or GC WIC bitmap classes using the new draw SVG method that we have added to GC graphics. Uh, you can also access the SVG DOM and a majority of SVG elements are supported as you see over here. Uh, 
uh, all the SVG support is included in both GC PDF and GC Imaging products. As you see over here, we have taken some SVG uh, files from a folder and we have rendered this to a PDF document. Uh, or you can create uh, your own SVG image and draw it over an image and save it as a JPEG, PNG, TIFF, BMP, J4, ICO image. This is our online sample browser for GCPDF where we have implemented various uh, features of the new SVG support in GCPDF. As you see here in this sample, uh, we are drawing various SVG files on the PDF document. So let's see how it has been implemented. So uh, we uh, take all the SVG files from a folder and uh, we create the GCPDF uh, document object and we also uh, keep on adding new page uh, to the document and then uh, keep on assigning the graphics object to this variable g and we also uh, prepare rectangles uh, where we want to render the, the svg files so those rectangle areas are defined here and we create a svg uh, variable which takes the image svg image from the folder and uh, then we uh, use the draw SVG method of the graphics uh, class and uh, render that SVG on the particular rectangle location. Uh, and that is, uh, the, that is how this sample has been implemented. So as you see that uh, various SVG images have been added at different locations in this document. That's how you add a simple SVG image on a PDF document, you can also have a look on various implementations in the sample browser. You can also refer to similar samples that we have added to our GC Imaging sample browser. In this release, we have also included a sample that will help you print a PDF document directly to a printer. Uh, this sample will be supported on a Windows platform. Uh, the sample makes use of GC PDF Print Manager class. Uh, that implements printing PDF on Windows using the direct 2D technology. It al also makes use of the GCPDF document print exe class. It actually provides the print method to print your document. Um, uh, the GCPDF print manager class also includes printer settings, uh, settings that you can apply on your document before uh, sending your document for printing. Uh, so that you don't have to manually set those settings through an application. You can do all that now programmatically. So have a look on this sample. In our online sample browser, we have added a sample to print PDF document directly to a printer. Uh, in this sample, we have implemented various options to print uh, the document. Um, the GCPDF document print ext class it extends the gcpdf document class and it will help you uh, send the print command to the printer while the gcpdf print manager class will help you uh, set various options before sending the document for printing another significant feature we have added in this release is the ability to linearize uh, an existing pdf document so PDF linearization is basically you are enabling fast web view of that PDF document and this works specially for large PDF documents where uh, the document pages keep on loading as you are viewing the document while the whole document is still being loaded in the background. So till now in GCPDF we have been supporting generating a linearized PDF document or a new PDF document that would be linearized using the linearized boolean property. But now in this in this release, we have introduced the save mode enum uh, and the save mode dot linearized enum type will help you save a save any existing PDF document as a linearized document. We have added new overloads to uh, the GCPDF document dot save method. It will take the save mode as a parameter. So as you see over here, if, you, if a document, a PDF document needs to be linearized so you just uh, load that pdf document into gcpdf document object and save it as a linearized uh, document by using the save mode.linearized enum type moving on to gcpdf viewer in this release we have added new enhancements to the ui of the viewer to provide quick editing of pdf documents in this ui we have rearranged various annotation form field uh, page options into a new secondary toolbar. Uh, these options are available uh, in the main toolbar as text tools, which will, uh, which will provide you all the text related annotations, 
the draw tools will provide all the shapes uh, uh, annotations uh, attachments and stamps would provide you uh, attachment stamp signing sound annotation options and form tools would provide you all the form field related options required to prepare a pdf form and the page options will provide you all the page related options like adding a new page deleting page or adding a new document in each of these secondary toolbar options uh, the undo redo button are included and the redact annotation which helps in redacting certain areas of the document these options are also included with all the annotations and form field options um, uh, we have also added the ability to customize these secondary toolbars if you want to customize any toolbar say the text tool toolbar so uh, you can customize it by using the second toolbar layout property where you can just add the options you need in the toolbar. You can also customize the secondary toolbar by adding uh, your own secondary toolbar. So you can use the viewer.options.second toolbar option to define your own custom secondary toolbar. In this example, we have uh, used a button on the secondary toolbar called action and on the click of which an alert would appear. Uh, and then you use the render handler of the second toolbar uh, uh, property to render that uh, second toolbar and uh, use the viewer.show second toolbar uh, so that it appears uh, in the viewer. And also included uh, in this release are two new themes, light and dark, uh, uh, so that your users can uh, work with the viewer uh, as per their preferred choice. Another feature we added in v5 release is uh, a new structure tree panel uh, in GC PDF viewer. So as you know that many PDFs these days have structure tags. Those are basically tags that uh, help you navigate to particular sections in uh, the PDF document. They can be uh, a table section or a content section uh, or a paragraph section, etc. This These tags improve the accessibility of uh, PDF document. So if your PDF contains these structure tags, uh, you can add a structure tree panel uh, to GC PDF viewer using the add structure tree panel method and open your PDF. So your uh, PDF tags uh, would be visible in this panel and you can use, uh, you can navigate uh, through these tags uh, to jump to any portions in the document. Uh, and if you want to retrieve these tags, you can use the structure tree property. So you can read the entire structure tree data using this property. Moving on to new additions in GC Excel. So MS introduced the concept of dynamic array formula where uh, you apply function on a single cell, but the result is returned over a range of cells or it's also called a spill range functionality. Now, uh, previously, uh, irange.formula property uh, was used to set the formulas, but when it was passed for dynamic array formulas, Excel automatically inserted the at operator. So uh, sometimes it resulted in redundant at operator in the worksheet. Uh, so the formula to property uh, is now introduced in GC Excel where uh, this property can be used together with dynamic array formulas. Uh, the advantage is that the formula to property works without uh, Excel adding, a, uh, at, uh, adding an at operator while processing the formulas. This property will work with the new functions that help specify the dynamic array formula. Uh, as you see over here, the, its application is simple. Uh, you just set the irange.formula to property uh, to a, a dynamic array formula. Uh, and that's it, the result is returned uh, in a range of uh, multiple cells. Have a look on the demos to know more about uh, where formula 2 property is used to set the dynamic array formulas. Another important function we have introduced in v5 release is the new import data function. This function loads just the data from the excel file without loading the whole excel file into the object model. If you want data from the whole worksheet or if you want only uh, specific data from a specific range, you can just refer to that uh, file uh, in import data function and uh, send the worksheet name and specify the location from where you want the data and then assign that data to your own workbooks range. 
so here you see you don't have to open that excel file and load it into the uh, gcxl object model but just use the import data function and get the data out of it so this is a more efficient and faster way to import data and then use it and work upon it in your uh, excel files one more significant feature we have introduced in v5 is the ability to print excel files directly to the printer uh, this will be possible on the windows platform so iWorkbook.printout and iWorksheet.printout, these two interfaces have been introduced. They can directly call the physical printer and send your workbook or worksheet for printing. And we have also added this uh, printout options uh, class that can uh, uh, help you specify certain options uh, before sending your workbook or worksheet for printing. Uh, so that becomes important uh, so that uh, you don't have to manually set those settings uh, when calling the print uh, function uh, from the MS Excel. So this will help you to programmatically print your Excel files uh, using uh, these two new interfaces. Moving on to GC Word. Till now, uh, GC Word has been supporting uh, data set, data table and I enumerable objects while binding uh, word templates with data. Uh, now we also support array and list as uh, data source types in the sense that uh, the elements of the array and list uh, data sources can now be accessed using a value tag, value template tag. Uh, so this is uh, possible now uh, for data types for which uh, the type dot is primitive property is generally true. So uh, the boolean byte, s byte, and all these uh, data types are now supported as data sources and can and the specific elements can now be accessed while binding the word report templates. So that is about uh, the major highlights of uh, V5 release. We have added more features in this release. You can go through these blog links uh, where we have added details about. Uh, the new uh, features and at the end of the blogs you can submit your feedback on uh, what you think about the, these features or how you would want to use them in your applications. Thank you.